Good morning, everybody. So this morning, the Justice Lab just clocked over a thousand subscribers, and I really want to do something different. Um, I've been trying to rack my brain and think of what can I do that might be interesting to a new audience, and maybe a few of my old audience. And I came up with, how's about I do a small mini-series about my favorite thing, apart from motorcycles, of course, and that's these. Sticks, I hear you say. Well, I'm into my slingshots. I love them. I've shot them since I was a kid. I've always, um, I've always been into them. And um, today I just thought, well, why not do a series, small, short series, about slingshots? Why not? The sport's been taken off lately. Um, in the last few years, I've seen uh, the whole setup go really professional. Um, and I'm thinking of actually maybe going to the UK and competing sometime soon. In the meantime, let me uh, do series one, uh, sorry, episode one of the series, and uh, this will be the collection. So I'll go through my slingshots one by one and uh, give you a quick rundown on them. And uh, just in case you were doubting whether I like my slingshots or not, I don't hang pictures on my walls. This is what I hang. All right, so without much further ado, uh, let's go through the collection one by one and um, string it all together and upload it. Adio. So we're going to start with the first set of 10. And that was the ones that were hanging on the wall. And here we go. I'm going to go through them really quick because there's so many of them. Right? This is a slingshot made out of citrus. So I call it the bulldog. It's actually a pickle fork shooter. So you've got a twist and tweak to shoot it. Uh, it's got a buffalo horn down the bottom of it. Not quite a good slingshot. I don't shoot it much. Um, it's banded heavy for big ammo. We'll talk about ammo in another, in another episode, right? This is actually one of my sculptees. I, I like to sculpture the slingshot so they sit comfortably in the hand, as you can see, right there. Um, I actually custom build them to the person's hand. Uh, this one's double-handed, uh, double-banded, sorry. Um, fairly heavy ammo as well. This one stretches slightly beyond anchor point at the ear. So you actually get to shoot it from about here, which I guess would be a half butterfly position. Next slingshot. This is one of my little favorites. This is a spalted birch frame. It's tiny, sits really easily in the hand. I kind of pinch grip it. And this one I shoot almost full butterfly. As you can see, for a very long draw on it. Notice I release the bands very slowly. Slingshots, bows and arrows. Never ever dry fire them. It damages the bands. This is the next one. It's just a little. I don't know what wood this was. This was actually given to me by my brother-in-law and uh, I kind of... It was a slingshot but I shortened it. It was an old school thing with mushroom tips on it. I'm using really thin rubbers on this one but quite wide and I just fold them over. Um, this one anchors at the face there. It's mostly for light ammo. Quite a nice slingshot. This is another citrus of mine. I like it because it's got this fiery orange fungus pattern in it. And the way I hook this is with loop tubes. I banded it with loops, loop tubes. Fairly heavy slingshot. Um, We'll be talking about the kind of bands I use on the slingshots, tubes versus bands um, at the later stage. All right, this is another one of my ergonomics. As you can see, again, the shape of the hand, finger sits there, thumb sits in this groove over here, your three fingers wrap around there. It's fairly widely banded, fairly heavy rubber. This is for, this is for fairly heavy ammo, and I draw it just to my face there. So, it's a nice slingshot. I'm quite happy with this one actually. This is one of, all these slingshots I've actually either made or acquired and modified. Um, 
This is a traditional traditional sort of frame. This is another one that I shoot kind of half butterfly as well. I shoot it from about there. Um, it's not a bad slingshot, very run of the mill, very average. But it's alright. You know. This is another one. This is a full butterfly one. And I attach the bands in this with bungs. I just drill the hole through it push the bands through, push the corks in, it's great in the field and this is a full butterfly as well, look how far this one goes that's a good draw um, I use this light to medium ammo right, this is a cypress traditional one with uh, heavy bands, sort of one of my rock lobbers um, I've actually finished this I don't know if you can see the shine on it, but I've finished this with 6,000 sandpaper with 6,000 great wet and dry and it feels like glass but I've actually figured out that it doesn't really work for uh, doesn't really work for slingshots, you don't want the slingshot to be that smooth that it's slipping around in your hands, you want it to be uh, you want it to be fairly grippy, so I don't finish them off that good, I just finish them off with 600 or 1,000 paper now and the last one in this batch of tin is this one. Now, tell me, can anybody see the goat, the goat's face, and that over there? So, this is just another old school. Uh, I use this attachment method that is really something that people don't do anymore, basically, but I just did it for nostalgic purposes. Okay, so that's first batch. And here we go to the second batch. Okay, so here's the second batch of 10 that we're going to do. We'll start with, this is one of the first slingshots that I ever carved out in an attempt to make an ergonomic one. It's actually a tiny little slingshot. It's not a... It's not really a good for heavy ammo. I shoot the glass, small glass hyaline, 8mm balls with it. So, but it's a cute little slingshot. Alright, next one is this one here. This is full thumb brace. So you hold it like so. And it's a butterfly as well. It draws pretty, pretty long. Um, narrow bands. And um, I shoot light ammo with this as well. Here's another light ammo slingshot. This has got a bit of a palm swell in it, and um, yeah, not a bad one. This is a birch as well, and it's spalted. I like using spalted wood because it actually has these black markings in it that are quite nice. This is a cypress frame, uh, banded, with, banded with light rubbers, but really wide. I mean, I've made these things like 60 mil wide, you can see and then just roll them up. Uh, problem with it is they crack a bit but this is a, a good slingshot for rock lobbing and it's made out of cypress and it smells like toilet cleaner and it has for years. This is another one of my rock lobbers. It's a citrus citrus slingshot, big one. I shoot really heavy ammo with this, mostly lead, 15mm lead balls and 15mm steel balls. Um, it draws to about there. When I started I used to like to have anchors around my face. I used to like to anchor my slingshots here. However now I find that you get a much better start in life for your ammo if you can draw it all the way back here. And instead of referring, ref, using a reference on my ear, like I normally do with a short draw, what I do is I touch the band just until I can feel it on the hairs on my face there. And I know that it's that's where the band needs to be for me to get the accurate shot. This is another one. Don't know where it come from. It's just a random one that I made. Sometimes I pick up sticks and I make them. This is another rock lobber. This is a cherry wood. Once again, pretty, uh, pretty wide bands. Fairly heavy. Um, half butterfly. Jobby again. I used to like... Uh, used to like the short bands, but now I've, the big bands have really grown on me. This is one of my favorites. 
Um, it's another sculpt that I've sculpted. I like kind of using the natural features of the wood as palm swells and that. But this slingshot just sits perfectly in my hands. If you guys can see, the way it nestles in my hand is just amazing. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's a shorter draw than my usual ones, but still kind of half butterfly. Um, very powerful lock rubber, this one. This is a, another sculpted one of mine, and it's double banded with 25 mil bands. I actually put no taper on these bands. Once again, very heavy ammo with this, and a very, very, very long draw on it. As you can see, it's full butterfly. And this one. This was a broken old daisy slingshot that I had, and what I did was I just modded the handle on it, kept the front, used the frame from the daisy, and just put this on it, looped it up with tubes. I don't shoot it much. I find tubes are not as accurate as, uh, as bands. Once again, it was beyond my facial anchor point. All right, that's the next slot. Let me just pull out an arm bag, because I bag all my slingshots one by one, as you can see. There's a big pile of bags here that I put them all in. Um, so I'm actually unbagging and bagging these as I go along. Hang around. Next batch coming in a second. Okay, this is a... Hang on a sec, I'll adjust the camera here a bit because something seems to have gone pear-shaped. There you go. This is another sculpted frame of mine, once again using the natural thing of the wood I guess. This fits really nicely in my hands. It's banded heavy. Um, I made it for really heavy heavy ammo but small ammo like lead and I shoot it from about there once again half butterfly. Um, I, seems to, I seem to have settled comfortably into that length. Once you find the length that you can use um, you should stick with it. This is another sculpty of mine I call this the Rocky. Does anybody see it? Never mind. Just being stupid. This one I call the Rhino. For obvious reasons. Kind of hooks nicely to the hand there. Uh, very skinny banded jobby. Uses my patented attach method of tube. And this is like a full, full, full butterfly. This one I shoot from back here. And it's accurate. And it's really bad if somebody's... Never mind. Won't give anybody any ideas. And the last natural. Another PFS. Pickle fork shooter. Why don't you shoot like that? I don't know, you gotta shoot low with these things. They take some getting used to. All right, that's all the natural. So, let's move on to machined wood. This was one of the first slingshots I made when I was experimenting with making my own slingshots. I was just looking for, it wasn't really, it was just a template to find the right width in the cup here, um, which for me is about 45, 50 mil. Um, once again, banded. This is double banded with really, really light bands. But it gets some velocity up because, once again, it's almost a full butterfly. Okay, now these next few are Chinese generic loop tubes ones. Uh, we got that one there. You know, nothing special. It's a nice burnt finish boxwood. And this one is the traditional Chinese shape. That shape there is traditional Chinese. It's a nice little slingshot this to hold in the hands. Uh, very short draw. I shoot this from the ear. Only because I don't like loop tubes being too long. And the last machined one was another experiment. That was this. Tiny little frame. Just once again. Sits nicely in the hands, it's designed for my hand. Sits nicely in the hands, uh, draws really long and quite easy to aim actually because I put these dimps on the end of the forks 
and it makes it simple to aim. You just put the dimp on your target, basically, because it's the right width for my eye. I guess it's got a lot, a lot to do with the distance between your nose and your eye or something. Okay, let me unwrap the next bit. Okay, so now we're down to plastic and steel. So let's start with the plastics. What I do with plastics? I buy these ones from China. They're actually only two or three euros. And then what I do is I cut... They actually sit quite nicely in the hand too. Um, and then what I do is I custom paint them in different finishes. They're not a bad little slingshot to carry around in your pocket. They're very compact on that. Um, Oi! Busted band. We'll have to reband that one. That band was actually quite old too on it. Okay, these are two slingshots. Um, this one's called Ocularis, I believe. They have an interesting bung method to put your bands in. You just slip your bands in, push the bung in, and push the balls into the bung. You can use it with both tubes and tubes and bands. So this is the banded version. And it's called Ocularis. And then I've got another one, which is the Jelly Bean, and I've got it running looped tubes, 1745 looped tubes. This is a bit small for my hands. Um, I kind of have to pinky lock it so it doesn't slip around. But once it's there, the um, only thing I have to watch is that I don't shoot my fingertip off. It's been done before. So that's my plastics, and now we're down to what I use every day, my EDCs. So, this is a little it's a titanium jobby from China. Most of these steel ones I buy from China, they're cheap, they're great, they don't flex, flex they're accurate, they're nice slingshots. Um, so, that's, uh, that's one of my Chinese titanium ones. And then, this one I like so much, that I've actually got two off. This, one is part this particular one is wrapped wrapped up. I use these pinch grip slingshots the most because they kind of feel the most comfortable in my hands. Um, well that's what this looks like now but when I got it it actually looked like this. It's probably the prettiest slingshot I got in my collection. It's very uh, very old school. I believe it's um, I believe it's drop forged and steel but it sits nicely in the hand. I pinky lock it. Actually, you can lock it in with your second finger. Um, very comfortable. And it's got the tube attached for the, for the bands right there. Okay, what else have we got? Another little frame. This one I made myself. It's just stainless steel and I carved away with until I couldn't carve away at anymore. This is probably my heaviest, heaviest banded slingshot. Um, it's got six 1745 bands on it. It is heavy, man. This thing takes a lot of, takes a lot of muscle to draw. I can draw it on because I do this about 150, 200 times a day. It's that heavy. This is another. Chinese one. This is made by a company called Dang Kong. Um, it makes some good slingshots. Very nice slingshots. Um, sits nicely in the hand. Small. It's quite quite nice grip on it. The way they tie it up and that. That's a Dang Kong. Now these two here are very similar. What these are? These are repelling um, climbers. Figure of eight. Carabiners. What I did with them was I cut the top off them, I drilled and machined holes in the top, put gypsy tabs on them, and use them as slingshots. Not a bad slingshot, actually. This one's banded with 2040 rubbers, and this one's banded with 1745s. It's a bit slightly heavier. And last but not least, my tiniest slingshot, believe it or not. This is actually shootable, but I put a lot of ball bearings in my hands trying to shoot it. It's a, a cute little slingshot, a little steel one. 
Um, I think that's the lot of the slingshots. Oh, there's just a couple more. This is one. This is my everyday carry at the moment. This is the one I shoot every single day. I uh, just like it because the bands come out the front of the slingshot rather than the top. So it's a real over the top. Um, it's just the band attach method is really simple. It's tube method. And it just sits comfortably in the hands. It's just a tiny little bit wider than this, which puts my target reference right on the tip of the fork here. Because this one used to be a bit further in from the tip of the fork. It's just a bit smaller. And what I needed was a gap that was two mil wider, and here it is right there. So this is my most my most used slingshot, as you can tell by the grubby wrapping on the on the handle. I just got one more that I just thought of. The judge. You can class this as a slingshot. I actually use it as a sling bow. So normally this thing you put looped tubes on it, but I've got like massive 16, 90 rubbers on it. So the idea is normally you wouldn't have this thing down the front of it and you just use it as a normal slingshot, right? But You get yourself an arrow, you put it through the whisker biscuit on the front, and there you go, now you have a sling bow. And obviously you can use it as a slingshot. Um, I always leave it rigged with this, I hardly ever use it as a slingshot, I only ever use it as a sling bow. It's a great little unit, once again from China, AliExpress. Got to love that place. I think that's the lot for now. I've got, of course, I've got boxes and boxes of frames. This is only what I use. Um, I can actually show you boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of frames, like so. That I have, that I have ended up with. Because I like to bend one up, use it for a few weeks, get it shiny with my hands and everything, and then move on to the next one. I think that's it for today. Um, episode 2 will probably talk about making a natural slingshot, uh, the steps and processes that you have to go through. So, that's it for today. See you soon.